for the special counsel. Um, because it is contracted for the year, I mean, you could always seek other counsel as well, if necessary. I did want to bring up one other thing, it's not on the agenda, but while everybody's here, the RDW Discovery Day was absolutely fantastic this year, and it usually is, but this year I think they went above and beyond the PTA and everybody involved did a really great job at it, so thank you to anybody here who's involved. meeting of the West Moraine School Board to order. We begin with a brief prayer followed by the Pledge of Allegiance and we'll do our roll call. Lord, I pray for your guidance and your decisions affecting all aspects of the school district and ask for a, your guidance and help and a strong finish to the school year for all of our students and staff and a healthy, happy, and rejuvenating summer that's coming up very quickly. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Motion was made by Mr. Gershi, seconded by Mr. Gambita. Is there any questions or further discussion on the motion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed by saying no? Are there any abstentions? The motion carries. On to number six, and a motion for that one, please. I move for the treasurer to report from the general food service and student activity accounts for January, February, and March. All <coughs> set. Motion for number six was made by Mr. Grobolski and seconded by Mr. Wood. Is there any further discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed by saying no? Are there any abstentions? Motion carried. For motion for number seven, please. I move for the approval of bills from the general and food service accounts. I'll second. Motion was also made by Mr. Rogolski and seconded by Mr. Wood. Any further discussion on the motion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed by saying no? <coughs> Any 
Any abstentions? That motion carries as well. Number eight is our student recognition. Uh, Mr. Jaworski. Okay. It's all yours. Thank you. Uh, first, we'd like to start out this evening by recognizing our students on the principals list for the third marking period. The principals list is represented by students on um, the high school uh, with the highest grade point averages. We'll start with our students in ninth grade. I know many of them are unable to be with us tonight. Our students in ninth grade with our highest marking period average, uh, Paul Porosky. And our second highest average, Catherine Rayla. Our 10th grade students, our highest average, Leah Hartman, and our second highest average was Alita Balanova. And if you're here, we do have certificates for you, so please come up when if your name is called. Uh, grade 11, our highest average was Adrian Agnello, and our second highest average was Rainey Carroll. And our 12th grade students, our highest marking period average, Marshall Davis. <laughs> and our, our second highest average uh, for the 12th grade was Evan Pierce. Uh, congratulations to all those students. Congratulations to their families. Marshall, thank you for coming. Uh, we appreciate it very much and, and keep up the great work and, and as we approach the, uh, the final stretch of the school. Um, I guess we lost for all. Everyone, thank you. All your accomplishments and Marshall, like, like the work is a thank you for coming. We're, we'd love to see everybody show up. Sometimes it's not a, not able to happen, but we're, we're proud of the hard work you do. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Mr. Hope. Continuing on with student recognition, I'd like to rep, uh, recognize several of our students from our 2023 FBLA State Leadership Conference. Uh, we had 40 members of Western Wayne's FBLA attend the 72nd Annual FBLA Conference, State Leadership Conference in Hershey, which was April 17th through the 19th. At the Award of Excellence session held at the Giant Center, following, the following members placed in the top 10. Adrian Agnello and Weston Nugent placed second, Business Ethics. Reagan Palmer and Colette Schmidt placed eighth. Uh, introduction to Business presentation. Uh, introduction to FBLA, uh, Maggie Kachessa, fourth place, and Chloe Mustache in sixth place. Intermeta introduction to Parliamentary Procedure, Maddie Vinton, fourth place, and Ray Lee Kronko, tenth place. Uh, Rainey Carroll, Alex Chapman, Jenna Kwiatkowski, Taylor Mayoko, and Emily Romanowski, first place, Parliamentary Procedure. Ali Pollard, the second, uh, Ali Pollard, second place, excuse me, a word processor. Uh, and Alex Chapman was seventh place, uh, who's who in PA FBLA. <coughs> Alex Chapman and Jenna Kwiatkowski each received the William Selden Scholarship Award, and Alex placed seventh and received $750. And Jenna was an honorable mention and received $350. Our Western Wayne FBLA placed sixth in the outstanding chapter, and 10 members are, are eligible to compete at the FBLA National uh, Leadership Conference this summer in Atlanta, Georgia. So congratulations to all of our FBLA students. And just to put in perspective, that is uh, in, in competition with students from, from 500 districts across the state in Hershey, which is pretty impressive. So our uh, FBLA always does a nice job. You know, they really do. Uh, they all look good. Yeah. Very, very well done. Thank you. Um, and, and for our last thing, at least at the high school level, I'll, I'll kick it over to, uh, to uh, Mr. James. Thank you. Uh, to give a quick backstory, our baseball team, every year they go to a tournament down at Pine Grove High School. This tournament was originally scheduled for the last week of March. Um, after two cancellations, a lot of rain, they ended up pushing it all the way to the end of April. Um, this is something our kids look forward to. They get to play some competition from against kids that they typically don't see in the immediate area. So it's something they really look forward to. Um, first game, they go and get beat 11 to zero in five innings. So not exactly, you know, they wanted to start the tournament. And then unfortunately, the rest of the tournament got rained out. 
Um, so the kids were disappointed a little bit. But their AD took the time after the tournament to send myself and Ms. Gregorski an email um, talking about our students and the impact that they had on him in the tournament that day. And it went as followed. I just wanted to take a moment to let you know the positive impression your baseball team made on me at the Cardinal Classic Baseball Tournament. Your kids were respectful, polite, and appreciative during the entire day. In particular, number 14, Frankie LeShawn. I apologize if that is correct, incorrect. When the weather turned and we went to postpone the remainder of the day, this young man shook my hand, looked me in the eye, and with a smile thanked, um, thanked him for inviting us to the tournament and all that they had done to make the field playable for that day. Um, long after the score and details of the game were forgotten, I'll remember this young man and his kindness, class, and respect. I have great respect for the job your coaching staff has done with these young men. They are teaching them far more than the game of baseball. Um, this is something that their AD did not have to write and take the time to do, but you know, our team made such an impression that day that he felt the need to, that night, send an email to myself and Mr. Gorski. Um, so I think that's pretty cool to hear that our student athletes are you know, not so focused on results, um, but the idea of competing and enjoying the game and learning life lessons along the way. So, Thank our coaches and our, and our kids first for that work they put in. Thank you, Mr. Jay. Thank you, Mr. Gorski. Anything else for us? And then we're going to go to Ms. Watson. Okay. I'm sorry that you came to the longest board meeting ever. <laughs> 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 we'll try to keep it moving. We, absolutely. This is part of this part of the meeting. <laughs> absolutely. Yes, well, you did very well, Dr. <laughs> uh, Mr. President and uh, West Union School Board of Directors, I have a slew of people here tonight uh, representing our STEM, some of our STEM program uh, at the elementary level. And uh, last year I did speak a little bit about the girls' uh, Northeastern Pennsylvania STEM competition that we participated in for the first time. And we came out uh, very strong and we did our very best last year. And we said we're coming, coming for even better this year. And uh, Last year we didn't place at all, and this year we have some, some trophies to show for our hard work. Um, and I just want to highlight the families and the students uh, tonight because I'm super proud of them and they just amaze me. So uh, I guess we'll start with, I have a little list here, I need a little list. I'm going to start with a group of three young ladies. Uh, they could compete in teams of two, one, two, or three. And uh, I have my three young ladies who are known lovingly as the boss ladies. Uh, the girls got to choose their team names, and it was one after my own heart. Uh, and girls, when I say your names, I'm going to have you stand up, okay? We have Molly Gifford, fourth grade at Evergreen Elementary, Mia Padula, fourth grade at Evergreen Elementary, and Taylor Brown, fourth grade at Evergreen Elementary. And uh, fourth grade is the youngest age uh, grade that can compete in the NEPA STEM Girl STEM competition. Uh, they compete in an age group of fourth, fifth, and sixth grade students. There is a seventh and eighth grade division as well. The projects and assignments are all the same for all grade levels. Uh, so I think that's saying something. And for their first year in the Northeastern <laughs> Girls STEM competition, the boss ladies hold first place in their age group for the program that you discussed. <laughs> it's just awesome. They worked so hard. They did everything right. Uh, they focused and collaborated as a team together. They communicated. They kind of would divide and conquer on things. Um, and for a fourth grade group, the youngest age that was allowed in the competition to pull a first place is saying something. So congratulations to the boss ladies. <laughs> um, and they also received, what were you got? $10 gift cards? $25. Oh, excuse me, $25 <laughs> gift cards for Amazon um, as their prize. And we had a really great day um, all together. So congratulations to the boss ladies and moms and dads and sisters and siblings who are here. So congratulations to you. You could sit. <laughs> OK. Next on my list, um, I'm going to have Michaela Frankowiak stand up and also Rachel Enslin. And Rachel is sporting the t-shirt that we got at our competition. Um, Rachel is a first time competitor in fourth grade from Robert D. Wilson. Michaela is a second year competitor, fifth grade from Robert D. Wilson. She came back with a vengeance and these dynamic duo tag teamed uh, all of the events together. And in the age group of fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, they received fifth place overall composite score 
uh, out of all the teams. And I think Rachel in the front there has her device. Uh, one of the engineering challenges was the girls had to create a vehicle that had a, several pages worth of requirements and it had to do these certain tasks. Michaela and Rachel worked uh, collaboratively on that. And uh, I love it because it's completely homemade. They did everything themselves. And you know some of the other projects that, that were there from other schools, you know, you wonder <laughs> what engineering firm was responsible for collaboration on those. <laughs> Not that it's bad. <laughs> um, and they, they got fifth place overall and did all the work together. And again, the communication, the camaraderie, and the collaboration, and the hard work was just awesome. Um, so congratulations to. Sisters who are already recruiting from the kindergarten class, as you can see here. So, I'm coming for you, Sarah. Um, so, you girls can sit down. And then we have, I'm going to have, actually, I'm going to tell you this first. Um, we had an opportunity, uh, I, something came across my, my email uh, that they have a, uh, an, a one week overnight all expenses paid um, STEM camp, you know, Appalachian Mountain STEM camp in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and I sent it out to families and just said this is something that's available. Um, it was an application process, so you have to have references and apply, and uh, we had several students in the district apply, and we had a sixth grade student who was selected and who will be attending uh, the STEM camp in Tennessee this summer. Uh, her name is Raina Weaver. She's in sixth grade. She was in our STEM club in fifth grade last year. Um, she gets to fly on a plane for the first time. Uh, so, really cool stuff. So, congratulations to her. She wasn't able to be here tonight. Uh, I'm saving Maria. I'm saving you for last, so don't be nervous. Okay. Uh, I'd also like to take a minute to thank, we have Elizabeth Takis, who is one of our, she's a kindergarten teacher at Robert D. Wilson, and I think Sienna Miss Cardamone, she snuck in too. She is uh, one of our special ed teachers at Robert D. Wilson. They were my... Uh, my helpers this year, they volunteered to come to both Evergreen and RDW to help me with the Girls STEM Club. We had uh, roughly 65 students participating, um, and I wouldn't have been able to do it without them, so I wanted to recognize them tonight, because it takes a, a village. And Elizabeth, I'm sorry, I have to give a shout out. Uh, at the competition, <laughs> there was a, a coaches competition, and we got to do the math problems and puzzles that the girls were asked to do. Um, all three of us competed. Um, some of us did not place. <laughs> we mean, uh, but our coach, Elizabeth Takis, she got first place in the coaches competition. <laughs> so, and then Maria Shemansky, would you please stand up? So Maria Shemansky, uh, I'm saving her for last. She was part of uh, an RDW fifth grade team along with Skylar Horse and Haley McCollum Fitzpatrick. Uh, Maria, I'm so proud of you. Um, Maria was another fifth grade student who came back with a vengeance. Uh, she, you know, we did a place last year and she came back this year and said, I'm going to do what I need to do to make it happen. She and her teammates worked very hard together. They received third place overall composite score in their age group uh, behind just two other schools. And uh, not only that, but she was also recommended for and accepted to a program at Villanova University uh, for STEM and medical sciences um, over the summertime. But we're not sure, you know, <laughs> the recommendation was made. And then it's like, oh, Philadelphia, and being in fifth grade, that might be a little, you know, whatever. But it's, it's truly an honor to be nominated. Um, I'm so proud of you. You came back and you crushed it. Uh, so congratulations to you. <laughs> to the parents and to the families, thank you for the support, picking your kids up after school and, uh, you know, them coming home with all sorts of cardboard and all sorts of stuff. And uh, it's just been a real, it's been a real pleasure. And congratulations. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So, of course, i got to say something about the boss lady. <laughs> As you get to be my age, you realize how important it is to have those strong and smart boss ladies in your life. <laughs> you guys do a lot to, and you will continue, I'm sure, to do it to help to guide your families along. Thank you to all the parents who obviously work hard with these kids to get them where they need to be, and for our wonderful teachers that obviously are doing 
above and beyond and excelling in getting the message across. And thank you, Ms. Watson, for all your work. Very good. All right, do we have anything else now for the student recognition? Uh, you know, I'm going to jump in. Go ahead. We're recognizing students. Um, I want to recognize a stu uh, student senior, uh, Nico DeBoe. He is in the work study program. Our firm hired him during our busy season. Uh, he came in, did a fantastic job, the most polite person you could have. Uh, we gave him some hard tasks, and, and he took the bull by the horns, and he really did a great job. And, you know, I, I appreciate Mr. Vigorski for uh, recommending him. And, um, you know, we're, we're looking forward to future um, hiring students from Western Wayne. We, we got a great, a great group of kids to tap from. So I really, really happy. Thank you. Anybody else have any? Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, we'll move on with our agenda. Our next oh, yes. Yeah. And any of you students, families, if you'd like to leave, now is a great time to speak out. You are welcome to stay if you want. Thanks again. Thank you so much. believe I'm the public today. <laughs> um, I have a question for you, please. We're going to do the name and all that stuff as well. Dr. Amanda Johnson. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the seating is a little smushy. Is that a good word for it? Yes, it is. Um, a little concerned. Yep. We are working, actually, we, we did speak to our building the ground person about making, reconfiguring the room a little right. bit. Right. We did this in order for us to be able to meet be able to better hear and communicate with the other board members. Okay. We're going to try to, I think, stay with a similar configuration, okay. but potentially make some other changes in the room over the summer. Okay. Because it, it seems that we have about half the seating for the public. Yes. We had rows filled in, no place to get in and out easily. Yep. If we have anybody that might be handicapped, I'm not sure that that would be helpful. And I noticed on the last video that I did, when people went up there, their backs were turned. Yes and their audio was not very good. Okay, and microphones for you guys. Yeah, I don't know, I think we're able to not do the microphones, and if there's ever a time when you can't hear anyone, just ask us to speak up, and we'll be glad to speak louder. I think I generally come across okay, but there's no right. problem with that. This right. one's small enough. So you're, At this point, I think we can live without the mics. So you're using us to, you were having people come up front so you could hear us better? Yeah, uh, not only hear the conversation from the public, but as well between the board members. Okay. All right. Because it, it didn't it didn't work. It it's didn't hard to tell which with that configuration from yeah. the center. It's sometimes difficult to hear both ends. Right. You can never really see each other. Right. So that's why we went to this more of a U configuration or a horseshoe mm -hmm. shape. And I think we're gonna elaborate on that over the summer. Okay. So this this little machine has a limited microphone? Yep. Okay. You guys were not necessarily coming over better having someone standing there in that area. It was kind of interfering. So just a just a thought for that, please. Okay. Um, the other thing, the um, the signs are circling through what they have up on the signs at the bottom of the driveways. Um, I've noticed that the meeting message is only there for maybe five seconds. 
Okay. So if you're going through, I mean, even if you're, you know, going up and, and Waymart where the, the uh, speed limit is pretty low, and it's gone, five seconds, and then it doesn't come back around again for a while. Okay. So literally it's, it's kind of difficult to read it. You have to pull over into the driveway, stop, and wait for it to cycle before you can read what's on there. So I'm not sure that was exactly what. I, yeah, I don't know if that was intentional or not, I, but I'm sure. I, I don't know if anybody I necessarily. Put, put that together, right? Right, that. right. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we can tweak speed if we need to. I will modify it. There, actually. Yeah, pretty, pretty yeah that's right. Relatively... That that would be wonderful. Yeah, just because you're driving there, you wouldn't think of it. It, it seems like it's all equal. My but... guess is most people probably don't stop to read the sign. They catch whatever line it is they're going by, but I don't know. You can't, you can't catch what's on there because it comes up and you're literally gone before. Yes. You can see there's something there, but not really read it. Okay. okay. Um, and the last thing, um, our web page currently has an outdated safety plan on our web page from the pandemic. Can we please update it with the most current? Well, that is current. Uh, it has to be updated every six months. And the last okay. time it was updated was it's talking about um, masks, and it's talking about um, distances and things that are no longer used. It's, it's on the web page. It's down at the bottom, and it says safety plan. So, so right on the main page. So that's it. We'll have to change that. Yeah. On the main page, however, it's on. Okay, where inside the page is that then? The one on the bottom, I clicked on it, it talked about masks and things, yeah. And it. We have to update every six months. Right. Okay, and how are we, um, as far as seeing? like the safety health part that we're allowed to see that's not sensitive information. We can go into that and see everything that you guys just approved. The public can go into that and read the, what is it going to be, a PDF? For the health and the, the plan that you have, the parts that the public can see. I know you can't show everything to us, but the parts that we can see. Is that somewhere on the page? The one that you approved the last meeting? Was it the last meeting? Yeah, Nothing on there gets to be public? No. Okay. So how is the public going to find out about things like we were talking about last time? Like your your plan for overdoses and things? That, that's confidential information. Overdose plans, what you do when somebody, how we manage first aid overdoses? Like where where they find where the public can find somebody who has the Narcam. The, the one we did last month, I believe, mostly related to responses to threats to the school. Okay, and but the health part of it. The health uh, part. The health and safety plan is on there. Yeah. The health and that's safety plan is The threat assessment is a little different. Okay. And yeah, I know you can't show the threat assessment. I know that's that's not something. But the part that talks about first aid after school activities, you were telling me all the places you could find Narcam at the office, the nurse's office, the yes. securities. So our all hazards plan is not a privy to public. Okay, so when we're at an event, how is the public informed? How is the public informed where to, where to go when we're at an event? How are we informed where to we seek to help? We have security as well as trainers. Mm -hmm. But how is the public? Depending on the, the nature of the event. Right. So when you walk yeah, in the building. Available, um, to handle that. So when you walk in the building, how do you know who to go to? How do you, how do you know to go to the office? You know, if there's an officer we there, have, that's obvious, uh, but. Fire exits labeled. Okay. Uh, uh, and, and then diagrams throughout the building as well. The okay. So that's that's not public. You can't say where you would go. It there's probably could be, but I think the staff on, that's on hand at any given time is aware of how to react if there's a situation. So okay. it's not necessarily if they are made privy to anything that's going on, they'll, okay. they'll react so, accordingly. So any any staff member, and they're identified as staff. I think sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. Depends on which which function you're at and what you're. Okay. For. All right. But there's always people there that are aware of. Mm-hmm. Okay. Our staff are, yeah, typically have badges on. Badges, okay. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good? Thank you. That's it now for public. Nobody else has anything to say, I guess, since there's nobody else here.